welcome to all the head coaches. I'm thrilled coaches who are uh, brave enough to uh, continue their team through this season. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, the agenda that we're going to cover tonight, just uh, sort of quickly, we're going to look through all of these various topics, uh, the events, the schedule, uh, some things that we're not accustomed to talking about uh, because this year is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about uh, registration, COVID. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire agenda to you there, but we are going to talk about things that are unique about this year. And we're going to we'll get your uh, questions answered. And I'm very interested to um, hear some from, uh, all of you head coaches tonight as well. Uh, so let me say we scheduled this meeting for two hours, uh, but I'm confident that it won't take that long unless you guys have an, a lot of things to talk about. So um, I believe we'll, we'll be closer to an hour. Uh, so from a, in terms of how uh, the protocols are going to happen for uh, today. Uh, if you'll notice on your screen, there should be um, some opportunities for you to interact with the Teams meeting. So my preference is that you don't hold all your questions to the end. Um, that's a good way to forget what uh, questions you have. And so there are two options. You can either click on that little um, hand that you see on a menu right there. And if you do that, uh, Manish, who's our uh, um, our gatekeeper today, uh, will be able to see that you have a question. And so um, the other option is the uh, chat feature. So if you have a short question, you might want to use the chat feature and just type it in, and uh, Manish will uh, will uh, interject at appropriate points and and get make sure that your question gets asked. Uh, if you have too long of a question and you, you know, you're not interested in typing it all in. Uh, if you raise your hand, Manish will make sure to call on you and will give you a chance to uh, to participate uh, just by talking. Uh, make sure that you turn on your uh, microphone if you're going to do that. When Manish calls it. OK, let's keep going. Uh, in terms of the events, this is a relatively mundane topic this year. We uh, said earlier in the year that we were not going to change our events, and we have stuck to that. Uh, the only event that has uh, a uh, change is ping pong propulsion, and it's a relatively minor change, one that we needed to improve the quality of our scoring uh, activity. And so we're going to ask your teams to bring a second copy of their practice log because we are going to pull one aside and make sure that it's available to our scoring team. And that way we're not trying to um, use resources that your team needs while they're competing. Um, so we're going to ask your teams to bring two identical copies of their practice log. Uh, we if, if you're if you haven't coached this event before, uh, this is an item that we use for tiebreaking in the scoring process. Continuing on, uh, we appear to be headed to a tournament that's about 40 teams. We currently have 35 teams registered, uh, and it's pretty reasonably split between uh, K5 and K6, which is good news from our perspective. Uh, we do have one second team registered at this point. Um, I believe, based on received um, from uh, various folks, that we probably have a number of other teams sort of in the wings, but that have not registered, uh, be mostly because of uh, a loss of a head coach that's trying to be replaced. And we've got a couple other second teams that are considering registering a team, but haven't uh, formally done so. Um, so I still think we're uh, headed for a tournament that's about 40 teams, which is half of our typical size. As a result, um, once we saw that this was the level of participation that we were likely to have, we redesigned the tournament schedule. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, many of you may have already seen it. It is posted on our website. Um, we will 
continue to accept registrations. I set a, a registration deadline uh, of a few weeks ago. Uh, that was mostly about the discipline of of helping us get helping helping us understand what size tournament we were to be planning for. Um, and so we will allow teams to register until that 45 team limit is gone. Uh, and at this point, uh, second teams um, get priority along with primary teams. So if you uh, want to register your second team, you have that option at this point. And we will we will register your team. Let's talk for just a couple minutes about the tournament schedule. Uh, as you see, it's a lot simpler than what we've had in the past. Um, this is the actual schedule that I've got clipped here, uh, the, the top half of it or so. And uh, what you see is we've got blocks of 15 teams uh, competing together. That's the maximum uh, t uh, number of teams that will ever compete at, in, at the same time in a room. The uh, conflicts this year, rather than looking through the schedule and matching it with your team number, which is what your what our normal requirement is, uh, what you'll also notice is that the conflicts are all common. And so uh, they're listed right there on the left-hand side of the, of the uh, page. And uh, to be clear, uh, when you're uh, putting your students in events, star a student who's in the starry, starry night event cannot participate in the grasp of graph event. And the charged up event cannot be assigned to the same student who's also doing anatomy. Um, and so just make, make sure that you avoid those six pairings um, and you should be good to go. Uh, some of the other events that either you're accustomed to having as a uh, uh, explicit schedule on the tournament at this point, or something uh, that would be a walk-in uh, and there, that's the uh, remaining four events. So in that, this category would be uh, Bridging the Gap and Crash Car Expert. Um, we will conduct a um, somewhat like a self-scheduling process in April uh, where we will be asking you for input on the conflicts that exist in your team. And we will make sure that your team gets a time slot for the remaining events that works with the students that you have assigned. Uh, and we'll also put a little bit of attention to trying to make sure that uh, it's a convenient schedule for you as best we can, uh, because this year will not be a normal year in terms of uh, how our footprint is happening on the campus of Macomb Community College. So as you're assigning events, stay away from those six pairings. OK, I want to say a few things about uh, COVID. Uh, I've got some ideas here that have, have been uh, put up. Uh, ideas for how to make this a little bit more practical for you. This isn't rocket science, um, but. Things that you can uh, take advantage of maybe to make uh, things safer for your team. Uh, and idea, examples being uh, when you're assigning kids to events, also a, a new constraint of you know knowing which group in school they're already part of um, i know uh, schools are all remote at this point but you guys many of the schools did have pods or classes or things like that um, uh, and you might be able to improve the accessibility of uh, event teams by putting them on to the same event uh, having your team meetings virtually, just like we're doing right now. That seems like uh, a, a no brainer anymore. You guys, most of you are probably experts at doing this. I'm, I, I don't have near as much practice as you do. Uh, and I've listed some other ideas for how you can try to make things safe in event teams as well. So things are getting a little bit crazy right now in terms of what's going on in terms of the infection rates and things like that. My perspective on this is that this isn't a huge surprise. When we first started hearing about COVID back in March um, and Dr. Fauci was telling us about what to expect, he warned us that this time of the year was going to be particularly challenging. And so um, while we do want first and foremost for everybody to stay safe, um, 
personally, I'm not getting too uh, fearful of it. Uh, it's this is now just a challenge that of things that we need to do well and do safely. Um, as we go forward uh, over the coming weeks, uh, if things get a little bit too crazy and and anything that you might have considered doing in person um, is is just too high risk or you need to pause your team for a few weeks, I think this is going to be a season where that kind of a schedule is going to work uh, because uh, things are things are running a little bit later this season than they have in the past. Uh, we've we've tried to be patient on our end in terms of letting teams register and getting things going just to try to understand the kinds of challenges that uh, we're going to have to accommodate in this unique, very unique season. So I'm curious from among the people who are uh, on the call today, uh, if you guys, uh, after you see my simple list of things that um, uh, we've suggested for keeping your team safe, um, are there other good ideas that someone has uh, that you guys you would like to offer up right now as a good idea for um, managing a team successfully during COVID? If not at this moment, uh, we'll have some time to discuss at the end as well. And uh, I'll appreciate any ideas that uh, anyone has to offer. Okay, open house resources. Normally, we're offering you guys a kit of uh, poster boards and a presentation and 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 uh, things you know things to touch. It's a more interesting approach to trying to understand what the various events are in our tournament. That's not a real practical alternative this year, and so. Uh, in, as a substitute, we are uh, will be posting online. It, I realize today that it's not up yet, uh, but in the next couple of days, we'll get it posted up on our website. A PowerPoint presentation that you would have uh, that might help you host a um, open house meeting for potential families at your school. So certainly, one of the challenges of this year is trying to figure out how to recruit new team new team members. Um, uh, getting even getting the ones from last year to return might be more of a challenge than it has been in the past. Um, and so anyways, uh, in addition to posting that uh, file online for you to use and modify to as you need as you see fit, um, we will take requests uh, from especially from new head coaches. If you would like a Macomb Science Olympiad board member to attend your virtual meeting, uh, virtual open house that you have and and be a resource that can help answer questions, then uh, uh, please contact Kathy Deckert at the email address that's listed, and we will do our best to make sure that someone is available to give you a hand. Moving on. Quick start kits are available as they have been in recent years and in the the list of available kits is listed there. It's not a new list. Uh, these are the uh, uh, identical uh, kits as to what was offered last year uh, for about half of our events. And uh, the one thing that is new this year is that we are offering a price discount to teams who place their order by December 15th. Uh, so there's two deadlines, so let me clarify. Uh, if you place your order before midnight on December 15th, you will be eligible to put in a promotional code that gets you a 10% discount on your order. So don't finish placing your order if you haven't figured that part out. If you missed that uh, part of the um, of the instructions, look for that promotional code and make sure you get your discount. Uh, well, if you if you if it doesn't work out, we'll we'll figure it out in the background somehow. But so 10% by December 15th, and if you order before January 15th, you'll still be eligible for a 5% discount. So please uh, get your orders in early and often so that we can do our best job in planning our uh, kit production activities in the background. The 
delivery of those kits will obviously not, well, maybe not obviously, but will not be the normal approach that we have of uh, hosting an event coach training in person this year. And so uh, my expectation is there will be a specific time or specific location uh, in January, after January 15th, um, where you will be uh, able to uh, essentially swing by and pick up your kits. Um, we may ask you to sign up for a specific time window uh, for that pickup as well. Uh, and if we do that, then we'll have an online sign up process of some sort that'll be easy to do. Um, it might end up being out of somebody's garage and you'll pull up, pull up to the curb out in front and uh, we'll know to expect you. And uh, there'll be a simple handoff and a minimum amount of, of uh, exposure uh, for all the people uh, involved. Just as a reminder, there's a lot of other resources that we do have available to help teams to be successful. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the website. I'm not gonna read all the details of this, but um, I will remind you that, that it is possible for your event coaches to be signed up for email alerts. So you might mention that to them. Uh, there's a link on our website. Um, so none, none of the, our online resources have, have changed substantially. We will have an event coach training event, uh, which uh, will be virtual. My expectation, even though it does not have an exact date, date scheduled at this moment, uh, my expectation is it will be at the end of January and it will be a virtual uh, session. Some of the, we've, we've had some discussions around what the format of that uh, session might be. And um, we're, we're talking about things like how to maintain or how to prevent conflicts so that uh, every one of your event coaches can attend all of the sessions that they need to live if possible. So it's, it's entirely possible that every session will be a unique time. Uh, in addition, we will be recording those sessions. So if your event coaches uh, have a conflict for the time that we set, they will be able to find that video posted online and be able to watch it or rewatch it as the season goes on. Okay, workshops and practice tournament. Uh, this is a page of me saying, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, in terms of workshops, we are maintaining a close uh, contact with our, the, our partners that typically host uh, workshops for things like wildlife safari and amazing arthropods, uh, events like that. Uh, we are monitoring what's, uh, what's available and we will publish uh, workshop information when it becomes available. Um, the season is just so different. Normally by this point, by the first week of December, we already know all the details and have it all pinned down. And this year, this season is just not gonna be the same. Um, in addition, uh, within Macomb Science Olympiad, we're exploring some ideas for publishing uh, some virtual workshops. Um, and it just hasn't made it to the top of our list yet of things that we're dealing with, but uh, we're gonna pivot to that soon. And uh, again, you can count on us to to publish that information as it becomes available. Let's talk about practice tournaments. Uh, I don't know yet if a practice tournament will happen. I can um, tell you some thoughts I have about what it might include or how it might be organized. Uh, at this point, we're primarily constrained uh, for, the, for facility availability. Um, in addition, uh, we, because we have such a small tournament this year and no one, uh, no one district has all of their teams participating, um, I'm really, I really have a strong preference for us organizing only one practice tournament if, if, if a practice tournament is possible. Um, and so, so for teams who have uh, attended the South Macomb tournament in the past, this might feel very normal to you. Uh, for all the other teams, um, this would be uh, unique, a unique year in that 
you know, teams from Lance Cruz or Utica or Chippewa Valley would uh, find themselves competing in a practice tournament um, uh, against teams from all other districts as well. Um, and in fact, Utica would find themselves actually competing for awards if we could manage to pull one off. Um, it will not be a virtual tournament. That's not one of the alternatives that uh, we're considering. Um, so I have a question uh, to the coach, head coaches on. Um, I'm curious about what your reaction would be to us trying to schedule that practice tournament on the Saturday of April 3rd as a possible date. So the, the logic of this date as a suggestion is that it's beyond the current window that Macomb Community College has blacked out the availability of their facilities. And that was what my original plan was, was to try to get us a date, uh, a common date for one tournament and use the college for the practice tournament as well. Uh, and a few weeks ago, the college shut down all of their, all of their uh, activities on campus through the end of March. So I know that that's not a possibility. The first uh, April 3rd does happen to be the first Saturday of spring break. And so it's a date that we would not normally consider for a practice tournament. And so I'm curious, uh, what do you think? If we pick that date, would that be a bad idea? Hi, John, this is Lisa Alfonsi from Fox. Yes. Um, I just wonder if um, that's the date and we're out of a ban, our family's gonna hightail it out of town because they can, just putting it out there. Well, you know, yeah, so yeah. you're saying is if, if families can travel and, and go places, they may be really they, ready to do that. Yeah, so that's the only, you know, I, I just wonder yeah. about that, that's all. Okay, well, I appreciate um, that's why I'm asking for feedback because this may not be a good idea. So we're we are very interested in looking for good, safe alternatives. Um, and it's uh, even if we if we find ourselves, we think we have a solution next week, we may find ourselves having to having not to have, you know, having the things shift under our feet again and and losing as well. So this is a very different right. year. Any other yeah. feedback? John, we got a couple uh, uh, messages in the chat. Uh, first one is it's a Saturday before Easter. Uh, somebody else also. Uh, I, I didn't think about that. And uh, one person has uh, put it in a comment that uh, they would like to travel. OK, Hopefully. all right. Hopefully not. I wasn't sure how people would would uh, if people would still be hunkering down a bit or feeling that that might not be a safe thing to do, but I do understand that people may be desperate to to uh, get out and go someplace. So, OK, well, we will continue to brainstorm on our end um, how we might be able to do that uh, in a safe fashion. And later uh, in our discussion today, we're going to talk about our, our expectations for the format of how a tournament, how a socially distanced tournament is going to happen this year. Um, and so uh, we're open to ideas if, if someone uh, thinks of um, uh, a location where we could possibly have our tournament um, that would be safe. Any other comments, Manish? Uh, I, no. The, I'm, this is Lisa Alfonsi one more time. Uh, on the website, it lists um, March 7th as a, like a chip, like there are listings of dates for tournaments. Uh, you're probably... At, you're probably seeing our, our history from 2020, okay. which we have not had the discipline yet to take down. Okay. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure um, that probably the districts individually will not be having practice tournaments as we see it right now. At this point, we have no, no agreed plan okay. for a practice tournament. Okay. Uh, but okay. I appreciate you mentioning that because that is something that we need to, uh, we need to work through our website. So I'll say um, we are still missing uh, Mr. Cummins, Mr. Mike Cummins. Many of you know him. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. We lost him last year to cancer. He has been our long-standing webmaster and and did 50 other things as well for us. And so we are still missing his contribution to our program. 
Um, but we are working hard to to uh, get our act together again. So um, anyways, thank you for uh, mentioning that. So okay. if you do see something on the website that confuses you, so let's uh, just take this as a sidebar. If you do see something on the website that confuses you or you think, hey, John wanted that fixed, uh, feel free to shoot me an email um, and that'll help us out. So uh, we can't do everything at once. You know, we're right now we're one of the things we're focused on is making sure that the event pages are updated. Uh, we sort of zoom past the discussion of individual events. At this point, I do believe that we have all the event rules posted. Uh, we there is still some material on the individual event pages because we have not had our event coach training for 2021 yet. And so until we do, we will leave the notes that our supervisors posted from last year's session on those websites as a resource that, that having last year's notes is better than, than not having notes. And so um, as always, when uh, you're looking at our website, especially in regards to rules, make sure that you have the current copy of the rules or that if you're uh, using some other study guide uh, that's on our website, that it also, uh, you know, keep an eye out for whether you think it's current. Any other comments? Okay, I'll continue forward. Uh, thank you for the feedback. Uh, if we do have a practice tournament, uh, I didn't take this page out of the, the things I wanted to discuss. If we do have a practice tournament this year, I just wanted to remind you as head coaches that we will continue our policy of re releasing the category index uh, information along with the uh, zip grades, um, as well as the the uh, one, the scoring uh, sheet that comes with Starry Starry Night that's unique to that event. Um, and this is a way that we try to get, help your teams get feedback in terms of how well they're doing. And so um, you should be looking to receive that information um, soon after um, the, the only practice tournament that would happen this year. You would, it would, it would be released immediately. In fact, we would probably, Try to make sure that your uh, zip grade forms get turned back to you uh, at the at the end of the tournament, and and uh, that those indexes would be also pre pre prepared and promptly published. So probably just um, sent as an a uh, email to the head, to you as head coach, and expecting that you would then distribute those that material to your event coaches. So that's just a friendly reminder of how we normally behave in our seasons. OK, let's talk about um, having a socially distanced tournament. So our goal is to have more space per student in a testing room. So I want to clarify what we mean by that is that we're not going to be trying to keep your two members of your event team apart. We are going to be trying to keep your pairs separate from other pairs. So our expectation is that your students have probably um, spent some time together already. And in fact, it would be really difficult for them to cooperate as an event team uh, were they not able to uh, be close to each other. Um, so um, that's how we're thinking of it. Uh, we will ask students to uh, form in a queue at the in, in an outdoor door on the building where they'll be competing. So for instance, the, and the, the two buildings that you should expect most events will, will occur in are both the, um, the P building, which is also known as the SEC or the Field House. Um, those are all names for that the building where we're accustomed to having our award ceremony. Uh, many of the events will happen in that large Field House. Uh, uh, a good number of events will also happen in the K building where you're accustomed to having your team table. So we'll be locating uh, competition areas in rooms that are larger than what your students are accustomed to part, uh, being in. So we they, none of them will be in the small classrooms that we sometimes have events in uh, elsewhere on campus. There are a few events that don't lend themselves to specifically uh, those, those other venues. Uh, so for instance, the Crime Buster event will likely still be in uh, the the room that it's in, but it'll probably be split between two separate lab rooms uh, rather than all the students being in one room. 
Uh, but so anyways, uh, back to <laughs> what's actually on the page. Uh, the students will queue at an exterior building door uh, and the parents will be asked to release them at that point. Uh, the parents will not be allowed in and we will have an escort uh, who will appear at the door um, and will uh, bring them in a single file fashion to their competition room. At the end of the competition, the students will be escorted out in a similar fashion. And you will know precisely which door they will come to. It might be the same door. It might be a different door on the same building. Um, so we, some of those details we haven't worked out 100%. Uh, we will expect all participants to wear a mask. Um, and in some cases, we will add the additional logistics of hand sanitizer for events where students are expected to or would be prone to touch something. Um, so when you look at the tournament schedule, I don't know if you've noticed, um, if you um, look at that, you'll notice that our tournament schedule doesn't operate on a 30 minute time schedule anymore. Well, let's say 30 minutes plus a 10 minute passing time. It's now a 50 minute plus a 10 minute passing time on the tournament schedule. And that is uh, to allow us to still offer the students a full 30 minutes of competition time plus the logistics that we believe will be going on before and after when the students are actually competing. And so once your students leave a, a, a competition area, we will have volunteers who will be assigned to uh, cleaning sp specific items or surfaces or anything that we think is a high contact uh, uh, situation. Uh, specifically for the um, amazing arthropods event, that's something that's a detail that's not listed on this page, but I'll mention it. Uh, we will be expecting your students or your team to submit their bug collection at the beginning of the tournament day. It will not have to, it will not be required that it's your, your, um, the students who are on your event. So the logical thing to do will be to find someone who can, who can deliver it at the appropriate time and place who's already on campus. Um, so we'll be asking for all teams to be submitting their bug collections at the beginning of the day. And then when your students are leaving the actual, the, the testing portion of the Amazing Arthropod event, uh, they will have the opportunity to pick up their collection as well as have a, a, a minute or so to talk with the event supervisor um, when they pick it up. Um, and that'll help your students not only will we be able to match your students back with their their um, bug collections but will there'll be an opportunity for a little bit of feedback back and forth between your students and the event supervisor um, and it'll also make sure that we've done a good job of of um, grading those bug collections uh, because that'll be the topic of conversation between the students and the supervisor so just in case there's something we didn't understand so uh, you should anticipate that um, there'll be a, there'll be an early early in the day drop off for collections, and that your students will be able to get them back themselves. The students who created them will be able to get them back. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, awards will happen in some fashion uh, online. Uh, we don't have the details of this yet. Uh, I think we're going to be able to see some interesting examples of other Science Olympiad tournaments doing this before we have to commit to a specific format. I'd like to learn from that. Um, when I wrote this, I said, well, maybe the following day, but um, I think we will be probably in, in good order to be able to, to um, produce a set of scores on the same day, and we will make a commitment to you uh, uh, we will have a specific deadline that we're committing to before we get to the tournament. So you will have some opportunity possibly to have some type of celebration with your teams uh, and know in advance to be able to plan around the announcement of awards. Are there any concerns or questions that you have on this topic that you would like to talk about at this point? You can either unmute yourself and talk, or you can put it in the chat, whatever is easy. I will say that as conditions change, as we get closer to the tournament, 
um, we would reserve the, the right to, to modify this approach uh, for safety um, and in the much unexpected situation that things get dramatically better. Maybe we'd, we'd uh, try to figure out how to change the format back to a more normal format, but I'm really not counting on, on that this year. Um, it's sad that we won't have uh, open events, that we won't have an in-person award ceremony. All those things that are exciting for the students uh, seem like a really just a bridge too far at this point. So any questions? John, this is again Lisa Alfonsi. Is there how many events are in the tournament this year? Is All sixteen are still in the tournament. So okay. it, the we have exactly the same that we had last year. Okay. So there, you see the twelve conflicts when we looked at the schedule, plus okay. plus okay. four of the four events um, that are um, that don't operate at, like in a like a group testing format. So things like rockets and bridges and crash car, and there's another one which I'm supposed to know off the top of my head, ping pong. Uh, these are you know ones where it's uh, a different format. Those are the ones that we're self scheduling. So. Okay, thank you. Thanks for asking questions. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, in terms of volunteers. Um, there's a lot we don't know yet because we've never run a tournament that looks exactly like, you know, a lot like this one in recent years, you know, a, a half size, but spread out over the day. Um, I think you should still expect that we're going to be asking your uh, team to provide a volunteer. We will still be uh, continuing our effort to recruit volunteers from the community because that, that is my long term goal that we've been working on for a few years now that we would be trying to reduce this burden on, on the individual teams. Uh, but that's just another wild card in terms of how many of those volunteers we could get to participate this year. So please plan that you'll be asked to provide at least one volunteer. Uh, for the teams who do have the ability and provide more than one uh, volunteer in typical years, I appreciate that as well. So let me say thank you for that. Um, most of the roles uh, necessarily will be related to event support uh, because that's mostly what our tournament's going to be. Um, after we lay out the details of what that schedule looks like, we will know more about how many people and how long those shifts are will, will be. Uh, we are we typically are trading off the burden to volunteers as to the, the, uh, you know how long people have to stick around versus the disruption that our supervisors experience when volunteers turn over. Uh, and so those will be some discussions that we're having in trying to come up with a sensible volunteer schedule. So and you, typically we're asking you to, to sign up for those uh, in April. Um, so that's, a, that's what you should expect this year. Uh, if, if our general expectation, expectations change a lot before, and we know it before that time frame. I'll be definitely uh, letting you know that so that we get as much advanced notice as possible. So uh, I'll keep going. If you've got concerns, raise your hand. Uh, we still do have sponsors. Um, last year, we we were, because everything shut down so suddenly, we really didn't get an opportunity to say a proper thank you uh, to the sponsors that we that we we had last year. Um, we uh, will be honoring those, uh, the recognition from those sponsorships last year, and we'll be asking our sponsors if, if they wouldn't please like to um, donate again this year, because even though it's a different year, we will, st we still have cost to cover. Um, we very much appreciate it. Um, in addition to the, the, uh, the financial support, um, I really appreciate the fact that there's so many people and organizations that think so highly of our um, our our program that they're willing to support us, and I, I, there, I might care more about that actually than the actual money. So uh, we love having sponsors. So um, thank you. Uh, if you uh, if you're interested, um, there are a couple of events specifically that didn't have a sponsor last year. Or, or don't already have a new one this year, and those are highlighted. We're quite happy to take sponsors for those. 
uh, we are willing to have a sponsor for more than one sponsor for the same event. Uh, and in fact, uh, we have had that before, and that's not a problem at all. Um, or if you know of a um, organization that you think would make a good program level sponsor for us, uh, we we are pre we appreciate getting that advice. So, and uh, we've we've found uh, program level sponsors that way before. So it's a little bit off the at the bottom of the screen. The, the Mahindra uh, Automotive is a is a sponsor is a sponsor that we uh, connected with because a Science Olympiad family um, decided that they were going to uh, that they could uh, help us out. I'm just noticing the top of this page is trimmed. There we go. OK, we're uh, getting to the end. Uh, and so at this point, I'm interested to take your questions or if, uh, for anyone who has ideas that they can share with their uh, fellow coaches about how to make the season more successful in a COVID world, we're happy to have that discussion as well. This is Lisa Alfonsi again, sorry. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> I'm just wondering about an ideas page on the site for coaches to share ideas of how, about how they're going to set up teams virtually. Yeah, you're saying, you're saying can, we, can we put some place on the website where, where you could put your own idea up in like a like yeah, a blog like, exchange kind of thing? Or are you right, just saying? So that we can help each other out. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a that's an interesting idea. Let's. Um, uh, it, so what's important in that? Is it important that it be like? Um, so one, we have a Facebook page that could it could okay. that discussion could happen there. So I'm just I was trying to think about what the technology format is and right. how it, how it might compare to what we already have. So we have an FAQ system where we take input from you and then we republish. So that's a more controlled environment. We have the Facebook page where you guys get to say whatever you want as long as it's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you could do that. Uh, do you have Do you have any other uh, specific ideas? No, I'm not the technology. I'm not that savvy. Which, but I'm wondering, like, when we once we get to having events, you know, coaches and students, would it? Like, would people set up a Science Olympiad teams group, and then, like, how would pe other people set it up? And can we help each other out in how to do that? You know, how do you administer virtual meetings? Would individual coaches set up their own thing, or would there be one web, like one place for a school Science Olympiad, and there would be different meetings? I don't know. Lisa, yep. This this is Kimberly. Yep. Hi there. I'm. I had intended to uh, have you guys set up something in Teams at least. I mean, I assume all districts could do the same thing, provided yeah. their school district is using Teams, such as Chippewa Valley. Right. And then you can set up um, a Teams meeting just for your school, where okay. you would give access to your students and give access to. I think you can do it with the parents. So that is something we can certainly look at, at least from the Chippewa Valley end. Okay, all right. Do all school districts, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with my, the local school district. My students used to, my students, my, my children used to attend. Um, in Utica, they use uh, that, uh, Utica is using Teams. Um, I, so now I hear Chippewa Valley is using Teams. Is that a common platform across the school districts? Because I've heard so much about Zoom. No other input. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of, hold on, John. There's a whole bunch coming up on the Lakeview has Zoom. Okay. Fraser is using GoToMeeting. <laughs> uh, few people are using Google. So I guess it's all over the place. But I think so, all of the platforms are, are different cosmetically, but uh, they are same underneath. So you should be all able to uh, set up 
yeah, especially if you don't have access, the Zoom platform gives you a 40 minute meeting for free. So, so you should be able to set it up using Zoom. And I believe Google is doing the same thing. I'm not sure if Microsoft is doing the same thing. So hopefully all every team has access to a to a, a virtual platform that they could use to be able to host meetings um, within their team. So there's this separate question that, that Lisa's brought up about how do we share ideas and how do we make those, how do we make that information available to all coaches? And so that's something we can work on. Uh, I will comment. So I'm because my wife is still the head coach of a high school level team. I'm currently involved in coaching a team myself uh, as an event coach for several events at the high school level. And um, we have used a combination of meeting in person with, you know, the appropriate, you know, face masks and things like that, as well as doing virtual meetings. Uh, and one of the things, uh, you know, I, I, I do know that uh, just in terms of having online meetings from a business standpoint or whatever, that once people get to know each other, it makes it a lot easier to be productive and and work together in a virtual standpoint. So you might be considering um, as in, in terms of if, if, if I was coaching, uh, you know, if I was a head coach coaching my event coaches, I'd say, well, maybe you want to have try to have one or two meetings in person if if you're working with somebody you don't know very well. Uh, and develop a little bit of rapport, um, and but then use that technology as much as possible, at least in the short term, to maintain that social distancing and keep people as safe as possible. So some kind of a of a hybrid approach is what I'm doing with students that I'm working with right now, and I think that's I think it's a great idea because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but anyway, other ideas. Are you guys concerned about being able to recruit students to your team? Like, how, how is the communication within the schools going on right now? Um, and obviously, your fifth or sixth graders would uh, that were on your team would have graduated off last year, and there's a, a need to backfill with the uh, the younger students again. Do you feel like you have the ability to do that? Hey, John, Mike Wood, how are you? Good. So recruitment, yes, we're having a very difficult time um, with recruitment. We're having a difficult time with information getting out uh, to all the students that are at the school. Um, not sure where the breakdown is happening, but uh, we're having to reach out specifically to parents that we think their child would be interested in. We have to reach out to them separately. We asked the uh, principal to send out in his monthly newsletter contact information for us for anybody who is um, interested, and we did get some interest that way. We also reached out to all the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers asking them to present this information when we had com conferences a month ago. And unfortunately, it really hasn't produced much. We've had a team meeting, a basic team meeting for returning members and asked the students who they would like to see on the team or who they thought would be good for the team. So we've had to reach out individually to people saying, hey, Johnny thought Timmy would want to be on the team, give the parents kind of an overview. But unfortunately, we're really having a hard time. Those are all those are all great ideas. What you just described that you're doing. Uh, I, my wife had on her high school team had a similar challenge and um, that that idea of, you know, who do you know that you would like to have on your team or might want to be on the team, I think is a great additional way to think of it. And in fact, my wife's team managed to recruit a, a, a young lady who's a senior right now in the high school who had never participated in Science Olympiad before. And um, I have the privilege of coaching her on one of the events. What a bright young lady. Um, and so she's a great add to our team, uh, but she had never done Science Olympiad before. And so there are students out there like that um, who you might be able to recruit. So um, 
have you uh, spoken with the principal at all about your frustration? We have, and that's why he sent out the information on the newsletter. We've only been working on this now for probably three or four weeks, which doesn't, it, it's a long time, but it's really not considering the obstacles. Um, we have to follow up with him again because we're still working on getting a few people. It's just um, not everybody reads what he sends out in <laughs> emails. So unfortunately, and and we really, it's just hard to get the information out to people. And then we had an initial team meeting and we had about four people who were interested say they weren't interested just because of the environment. They were nervous about having to get together with, with other people or, you know, because there's so much unknown, why would we want to spend all this time studying for something that might not happen? So we tried to promote the, you know, it's good science education, if nothing else, but it's just, we're hitting roadblocks and we're trying to figure out other ways to overcome it. I know there's a lot of pressure in the system in general, just the education system in general. So I'm sympathetic that families are feeling, you know, feeling that way. So those are some great ideas that you uh, talked about for trying to reach out. Has anybody else had um, uh, so there is a couple experience? there is a couple of things that came up on the chat and generally consensus is we'll see uh, it appears that everybody is in uh, early starting mode. Uh, I totally agree with John. Uh, I think Susan put it in the chat that she registered the team because sixth grader reached out to her. And those kids who have participated, who are there at the school when I coached at Massmore, that's where the success came from. I would talk to my daughter and say, hey, who else you think? Not just in your class, but if you are a fourth grader, there is at least two or three other fourth grade classes through different teachers as you guys play out, who do you think are kids that would be interested? And once I got the name, I would reach out and say, hey, you know, to, I'll, I'll reach out to the school. School would pass the info to the parents that, hey, so-and-so wants to talk to you about Science Olympiad. And once I got the info, I'll tell the moms and dad what this is about. Uh, one of the story, I don't know if you guys have heard this from me or not, but uh, I talked to the guy in Lincoln, Nebraska, who makes the water bottle rocket launcher. And I've known him for five to six years. And a couple of years ago, he told me, he said, some of the best things he was, he has a PhD uh, in physics and he's a high school physics teacher. But he said, the pure joy if he had to say what happened was two of the kids that he coached in kindergarten, nothing to do with he has a PhD in physics or nothing to do with uh, him teaching at high school, but just doing launches, free launches in summer. These kids got so entangled in it that both of them made aeronautics their, their career. And two of them are working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. So the parents who have a lot of hesitations, this is opening it up for their kids. I'm very pleased that we, at least I, I'm still very hopeful that nothing's going to derail our opportunity to have an in-person, even though it's socially distanced tournament this year, I felt very bad about our inability to have a tournament last year. And I know that there's a whole cohort of students that this has impacted. Uh, the students who graduated last year and now the students who are the following year who are now coming in and this is going to be their year to graduate from elementary school. I would really, really be sad if we went two straight years without being able to host uh, some form of a competitive tournament for these students. So anyways. Other, sorry, I'm one, going one other thing, John, how I, I feel. One other thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, we used to have, or we still do, but I don't think it's going to work, uh, what Kathy was doing 
uh, roadshow, right? Where oh, the open house? Up, yes, open house roadshow or open house kit. Yeah, yeah so for this year, that. yeah, so that was one of the things that I talked about. So we will have a, a um, an updated uh, PowerPoint deck that teams can use and modify. Uh, but the idea of set of doing the you know the logistics of sending a common set of materials around doesn't seem like it's the best. It doesn't seem like the safest approach right now. So we're we're not offering that this year. Yeah, but we are we are going to do our online online version of it. I think Kathy is working. Yes. Uh, in fact, Kathy so, and I talked about it just earlier today again. So. Yep. So what I was going to suggest was the coaches who have 15 let's say whatever, 5, 10, 15, 20 kids or families who are interested, you can do an online session where you can show the parents what this is about electronically. You can meet just like what we are doing right now and try to recruit it that way. And if you guys need help with that, you know, I think me, John, a couple other people, we should be able to help out. We're going to be putting it some extra attention to make in, including some links in the PowerPoint deck that to some of the videos that have been recorded uh, of past tournaments as well, just to try to give some uh, so new families get some sense of uh, what the program is like in a normal year. This is Lisa again. I I was reading the website where uh, it's possible for two schools to combine forces if they don't have enough um, students to to field a, a complete team is did I read that right yes we do have membership rules that that are uh, you you most I'm looking at the the teams that are represented by the folks attending here today you guys don't normally think about this um, but we do have essentially rules that are intended to try to help small schools uh, and a, a policy that we added just last year, which might be, um, so I suppose it's possible that we might have two schools that would combine. Um, we, the um, other policy that I'm thinking of um, is where uh, a student who finds themselves in a school that's not gonna have a team uh, is eligible to join a school that does have a team. Okay. okay. Um, and so my my request to you is um, not to do that without our knowledge, just to if, if you're so um, if you go to our uh, website, let's see here, maybe I can point this out uh, for anybody who's interested in. Um, let's see here if I can. Elementary head coach. I don't know, Manish, you can tell me if I'm. Uh, can you see the uh, elementary? Yes, I can, I can see that. Yes. OK, so here under um, the 2121 tournament. Uh, if I clicked on 2121 tournament and a new row appeared underneath it called membership rules. And if you go there, uh, the policies that we're talking about. Um, the one that I was just talking about at the end is uh, students from schools without a team. So you'll find that there. Uh, there is also policies about two schools with the, we we had targeted this to small schools. Yeah. So that's, that's how it's written. Um, I think we would be willing to have that conversation again this year. Uh, if, if in fact, um, I don't know. These policies might need um, might need updating for this season alone, and we've not thought about it in great detail ourselves. So, uh, but this is what we've these are the, these are the policy choices we've made in the past okay. to try to accommodate this situation. Because I've reached out like the other coaches, um, particularly to my past families, and I haven't had. A, I haven't had a lot of return um, correspondence. I feel like people are just waiting to see. And um, and once we have this meeting and we have some more details, I'll be able to pass that along and get more feedback. But I've been really disappointed that I haven't had feedback back from even returning families. Um, 
that you would expect that know the program and are excited about it. Right. So that um, that I think it will build as people become more confident about the, the COVID situation. I don't know. We may find that our season feels very much just like a one tournament season where, you know, the, 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 the lead, the ramp getting teams fielded and, and functional or whatever is something that takes a couple months longer than normal. And our, and our destination is the May tournament. And that's, that's the season. Yeah. And that might end up just being the, the logical way that this season plays out. Um, and that does give us the luxury of, you know, getting past, some of these winter months um, and teams still having the ability to form and, and get themselves organized in the spring. Uh, if, if it can't happen right now as as things are starting to look worse rather than better. So while we're talking, there is a few other things that have popped up on the chat. Kimberly has a good idea. We've got some videos out there on the website talking about stuff and I think Kimberly is uh, in one of them if I recall correctly. So you yeah. can use those videos. Uh, I think Rachel Woods put it in that they've created their own video and sent it out this year to recruit the classes. And Princeton, Amanda from Princeton Elementary put it in that uh, they have a couple of students that will be joining from their online version of the school. They don't belong to Princeton, but they are part of the online school and they, they so, are going to try to recruit those. So help me understand, help me understand those boundaries. So there are students who are attending in person. The online students are those students who would normally attend Princeton, but have chosen to only be online or is it something else? So our district um, decided that students would either choose to come to school brick and mortar or go to our on online virtual program and they can't switch in back and forth um, during the school year. So some of my former teammates, um, their parents chose to do virtual school this year instead of doing any kind of brick and mortar. Um, so and I know that they would be interested. Well, so would they normally be if 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 this were not a COVID year, would they be attending Princeton? Ah, uh, yes, they would be. Okay. Well, if if that's the case, then I don't think there's any. That'd be great. I think it's fantastic that students who have chosen to be 100% virtual still see the opportunities of, of participating on a team with the school. So. And in fact, it might be more important for them than anybody because they're so by themselves in, in their virtual situation. Um, great. Rachel, Rachel Wood has her hand up. I don't know, Rachel, if you wanted to say something or did you just put it in the <laughs> chat and you're good? Um, so, yeah, this is Mike, her husband. I'm, we're, we're sharing the, the iPad on this meeting. Um, John, I got a question about um, the daily the the schedule for the may 15th event yes um we're looking at a lot of conflicts that we have with our very diminished size team and i'm counting so it looks like you only have six classrooms is that kind of what the what the um layout is uh so no um so let's un i'm not sure i understood your question so we okay, would have so Oh, so I, I'll, I'll be a little bit more specific. Um, with our team number, we have quite a few conflicts already and we don't even have a, a full team yet, but I was hoping or asking, could we have um, um, multiple, like for anatomy, could there be two test time slots for the team members? For the individual team members? Yeah. So for instance, anatomy, if you're um, team one, if one through 15, your time slot is at 11 o'clock. Uh, so be, because I, I had mentioned earlier about the simplicity of the schedule, um, that the, the conflicts are all common this year. So is what you're saying is that the conflict that you have is that the, the student who wants to be on the anatomy event also wants to be on charged up? Um, if we if we come to that, yes, that's a possibility. 
Um, because I'm that's just a, wondering if, if that's if a conflict. Could, that's everybody. a conflict that every every team has. Um, so no team would be able to put the same student on uh, anatomy and charged up. And so is what you're asking me is would I give you a customized schedule for the tournament so that no, you, no, you no, can break no, that? No. Uh, well, yes, that would be wonderful. Um, but no, I, I understand that you can't do that. Um, but like for anatomy, could you just not open up from 9 a.m. until the, the 2.50 and just kind of um, take that block, the, those those three sections, and just kind of copy them over on the 12.50, one to 150 and the two to 250. And then the teams would be able to, well, okay, well, we can we can squeeze into the AM slot and then um, do the PM slot if we need it. You're saying, would we, could we open up more sessions of the same event? Yes. In, later in the day? Yeah. Uh, that's not likely. Um, because, well, so help me. And, and John, that, I, I, I'm, I'm that's not unlikely. looking for an answer right now. <laughs> that's unlikely. Help me understand what, what's motivating that request. Um, just so that we would have less conflicts. Um, I know when we had the, the practice tournament, um, it seems like eons ago, um, you were either, you were, you were trying to be everything in your A schedule and then um, sometimes you'd have to fall into the C schedule uh, if there were. Okay, so that's the, that's the format of the Utica practice event. So the normal Macomb schedule has conflicts in it for every team. What's, what's different this year is that those conflicts are the same for everybody, right? In most years, you have to, you have to like, I'm team 65. I look on the tournament schedule. Oh, look, here's, these are the events that are running at the same time. For team number 65, these are the conflicts that we as, you know, the Roberts team needs to avoid, right? And and so in every year, we, um, our, our goal in creating the tournament schedule was to make sure that there were never more than two events happening at the same time for any team, with the exception of things like um, uh, the walk-in events, where, uh, so, which you got to cho choose on your own. So this year, actually, there's a little bit fewer co conflicts in the schedule than you're accustomed to having, because we, because it's so much simpler. We we were able to remove, you know, right now there's six pairs, and you would have had um, at least seven in the past, at least seven pairs of those conflicts. So we managed to cut that down a little bit uh, by creating the self scheduling arrangement for the the last four events. So. Aside from the fact of what the specific combinations of conflicts are, so and just to be clear, you know, stars students can't do graphs, charged up students can't do anatomy, crime buster students can't do machines. That's the nature. Each of those roles go together, right? And you, when you look at your, the tournament schedule, you ought to see that pattern. Um, so it shouldn't feel like a more constraining tournament than you've seen in the past. Help me out. Am I not understanding um, what you're asking about? Uh, I I am understanding it. Um, you you actually clarified it more for me, and um, Rochelle's even explaining it to me because we we <laughs> mute when you were talking. So um, we're 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 good. Okay. Yes, dear. <laughs> well, I, I want it to be clear for everybody, not just you, Mike. But uh, thanks, Rochelle, for the help for the assist. Other questions or comments? John, real quick, if you want to take the attendance, uh, if you hit those three dots, you should have an option of downloading who is who is here. Yeah, I was hoping we would have, um, let's see, uh, what am I doing here? Meeting, meeting options? I'm, I don't see that as a... I saw it somewhere today and now I can't see it again. Do you hmm. hit three dots? Does that give you? Yeah. I captured a screenshot of the of this the people I see there right now, so I'll be able to come back and find you. 
Uh, I am disappointed that Sorry. we don't have a few more people. Yes, Danielle. That, no, that um, you're on like the small gallery view, so that's not going to be all the people in the meeting, I don't think. Oh, He's okay. saying, okay. see the three dots <laughs> next to the hand up? You click that, and uh -huh. then, yeah, you can do that, or you can hit the little people all the way to the far left-hand side. Nope, not on the three dots. <laughs> like the, Isn't that funny? <laughs> Yeah, but if hilarious. you click the I first thing next before. to the chat, like see the chat messaging window, the thing all the way to the left. One more. Yep. There's little two little people. If you click that, it shows the people that are in the meeting currently. It'll list all the participants. Well, here we go. Okay. Well, it says there's 11 of us. So yeah, at, the, at some point, we, there were more of us. I think. Okay. There were 14. Point, That's my 14. other coach couldn't get in either. Um, I co head coach, and um, she's been trying to get in the meeting since 520, and it won't let her in. Oh. So there, there's there been major issues with Microsoft Teams in our whole district today. I, I teach kindergarten, and I spent the whole entire morning getting kicked out of my own meeting and not being able to share my screen or do anything today. So. I guess they're working on, they did some upgrade over the weekend and whatever they upgraded caused a whole bunch of problems. And now they're trying to go back and revert to the old version. So there's just issues today, <laughs> but I see your recording. So I told my other coach that she can watch it when you're done. All right, we'll make sure to publish that prominently so that uh, so that coaches that might not have been able to attend can find it. Yeah, John, you can click on those three dots right where the participants are. I think that's where you can download a copy of uh, who's no, here. I, oh, right, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right there. Try that. Yep. Oh, there, there we there go. go. Yep. Thank you. I'm I'm learning here. I'm we all are. Trust. I'm not sure if it's actually doing it. I can't see any reaction to it. But. Yeah, I think it puts it in your Teams chat. Okay. Well, I I got five copies of it. I think. <laughs> I clicked on it at least five times. Thanks for the coaching. Okay, any other questions or ideas, concerns, anything? I appreciate you guys taking the time to and the support of to keep uh, Macomb Science Olympiad up and standing up. So I really don't want to see all the teams go down for another year. Well, we appreciate all you guys' hard work. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, John. We yeah. we appreciate it too. Yeah. Say good things to your to your friends and colleagues. Well, that's <laughs> what I tell my parents is that it's Macomb Science Olympiad is a really awesome group. And so they are working hard to make it safe. And um we can trust that it will be a well-run tournament and uh you know the kids will be safe and follow protocol and everything so yeah thank you yeah we will thank you i know okay well if um you know where to find us um we will continue um so the things that are coming up so um opportunity to order kits we're busy building stuff in the background we're wondering if we're just going to have a big supply at the end of the season not that that's the end of the world but we are trying to make sure that all the supplies that your team might need are available um and we will start to pin things down so you know coming in the near future our um our event coach training at the end of january um if i had to guess just off the top of my head it'll it'll, it'll be that last weekend in january and it might span more than one day, even, as, you know, because we're probably going to spread it out uh, to try to cut that. Because we, so for instance, for AS for Anatomy, we might only have one session for AS for Anatomy, um, and uh, to keep it from overlapping with what other people might want to be seeing, we may make everything uh, just all in a row instead of happening at the same time this year, which would require more than one day. Um, but we will publish a very explicit schedule for that. It would be like this moment now where um, in addition to the people who are able to attend, we will we will publish the video online as well. So those are the things that are going to happen um, you know, by the end of January. And hopefully by then we have a better perspective on the challenges we're facing. And we will follow up with Lisa's idea about how to create a, a um, 
a forum or something that that helps uh, you guys share ideas with each other. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll uh, call it a wrap and everybody stay safe and thank you so much for returning as a head coach. Thank Thanks, you. Jen. Good evening. Go get yourself some dinner. <laughs> hey, John.